but that's okay because uh, Morpheus may not have had that much experience but Morpheus wasn't stupid <laughs> and uh, to be a um, a zero tolerance type of man that I am today have came with it have come with practice and um, every now and then the practice means that there's a there's a quicker cutoff point than tolerating the end like in your relationships there are lots of red flags there are lots of people telling you you shouldn't be with that person there's there's lots of facts that are before you but you deal with you deal with nonsense you know you deal with it because there may be kids involved there may be financial connections there may be property invested or you know that as soon as you go to the courtroom she's going to take half if not everything that you have so you know you deal with the nonsense I've learned so many times years ago to cut it off when it's already bad before it gets worse and uh, you would think that she had the upper hand while she was you know cute big eyes you know uh, soft skin I was like okay all right Okay, so you are you are you are angel face devil. I'm thinking to myself, I'll deal with you in my own way, because I could be very ruthless. And how I do it is, it's never domestically, it's never domestic violence. I don't get back at people at their level because I don't want, I don't go that low. I don't debase myself to get back at somebody. I get back at you by being better. I get back at you by succeeding and being successful, right? Um, some cultures need to take a uh, cue to that. <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of uh, rumors of past wars and cultures that have dealt with um, that dealt with severe battle. Their culture, their country and their town has been demolished, but they've came back to be better than some of the other cultures that we currently know of are that's currently around the Western civilization. You know, they come back by being better. They come back by owning businesses. They come back by making products that we have to buy, <laughs> that, that we purchase. You know, they, they make products with their name on it, their cultural colors and their flags. They don't come back to war. There's no need to fight. You just prove to that person that you are better than them. Okay? You know, that, that uh, I'm going to get on to the story. I'm, a, I'm getting ready to get too far ahead of myself. Let me get on back to this girl that we're talking about here. Okay. So, Neo, you thought it was over. So, what happened at that time was um, I was approached by, that's when I met my uh, 22, 20, 22, 23-year-old friend. And this girl was... Uh, a ride or die type of chick she wasn't serious about everything although she did take the relationship seriously she just she wasn't bitter she wasn't jaded she wasn't over the hill you know she wasn't she wasn't your common lady who's uh, so feminized where she don't know how to peer bond she was good to be along good to be be around okay no matter for how long um, but it was prosperous it was dutiful and at the time I wasn't interested in a long term relationship anyway but just to enjoy myself as a man okay and so I decided to give the girl the chance hang out for a little while it was good, it was great um, I have no regrets no regrets at all and so one day happened right I'm at home and <laughs> Uh, getting things together. This is when I began to uh, uh, move out to get my get my house together, right? And started coming up with talking to people and getting wiser and being uh, inspired to create this uh, these audios for you to be a teacher. You know, people calling me Morpheus, and I'm a wise mind above my time because of my experiences, just developing myself. So I was in a car one day, my Lexus, and my 23-year-old was sitting there in the passenger side seat. 
and we were talking about um we we're just talking about business really i mean a lot of 23 21 year old uh girls they don't really they're not really on it that much but my whole intentions was to inspire her you know contrary again this is contrary to what older women think a lot a lot of old women think that older men are always after taking advantage of your younger women you know they they'll think that um they they want to claim that we are all uh sick you know that we're just trying to hurt the younger girl and going about our way okay but most times these come from bitter women these come from women who just lost their opportunity where I'm going to explain to you in a moment where they made bad decisions in their life. And so they're actually jealous of the younger lady because the younger girl has an opportunity. The younger girl has a future. The younger girl has prospects where she can meet men who can actually prop her up and make her better if she make the right decision, especially if she decides to settle down. If she settled down, she has an opportunity to get married if that was ever in the play I don't suggest it but if it was ever in the play she has the opportunity okay until the until the marriage laws change until the courts look at marriage differently I would never suggest marriage and as a matter of fact I won't suggest marriage anyway because I wouldn't want you to bind yourself down to any contract or paper or you need to go get a blood test or you need to go get a certificate just to get married to the person that you claim you love just love them just be with them What's stopping you? Right? Why you need somebody to approve that you're together? Aren't you adult enough to approve yourself to be with this individual? Or you need confirmation to uh, decide to make decisions because you need somebody else to be your second brain because you can't depend on your own. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. Anyhow... So contrary to what a whole lot of other older, bitter, over the hill and lost opportunity women may think, OK, there is some good pros that is available when there is a relationship between a younger girl and an older man, especially if his, my, his head is in the right place. Again, here you go with this keen author situation. How old was Lady Guinevere versus keen author in the movie? OK. So he was an older gentleman, white beard, had his own uh, castle, and Lady Guinevere had her own castle, but apparently she was a lot younger than him. All right. And what man would not want a virtuous, um, not only just virtuous, but want a, a, uh, a woman who has bodily prospects, meaning that she's able to bear a child. She's able to be, she's able to peer bond and mold with him and make a better future for his life. Okay. Only desperate, weakened, feminized men want someone who is, uh, have been on the roller coaster too long. Okay. They, they, they bid themselves to be in a low hanging lifestyle and accept leftovers because they care about themselves at that level. OK, when you need to have standards and you need to have principles to yourself. Anyhow, that's not a part of the subject. But while we're there, I received a phone call by this, by that, uh, <laughs> by the cute white girl with the angel face. And uh, the girlfriend I was with, the 22, 23 year old, she wasn't the jealous type of girl. She would listen and understand first and she wanted to accept she would accept what I needed to say at that moment she would listen to me and hear me out before she got emotional and got out of her mind because she's not quite jaded this is why I have a this is why I have a standard of who I will date and what I would accept now in my life because I've been there done that and I know how it operates and I know the mind of the female I know what happens when her clock is running low. I know how she's going to handle herself at certain age ranges. At, at a certain point in a woman's life. And when she's been around the donkey dunk corral for so long. When she's been dealing with guys who are rough necked, rough hand, heavy handed. Uh, bull headed or aggressive or just blue pill. Immediately she will expect for me to be the same. But when that girl don't have that much experience, 
you know, she still have a lot to offer. She's still young enough to bear children. The list goes on. Then uh, there's an opportunity where she's not going to be burnt or burdened with the stress that older women have, like being jealous, can't peer bond, can't have a good conversation about anything without bringing up something horrible from the past. So that was a good quality of her. She would listen first, then ask questions later. Then, of course, the honesty was always easy and it's always easy with them and they're easy to understand. And uh, the white girl called and I seen her, seen her number and her name on the caller ID. And of course, I thought I've gotten rid of it. But we, at that time, I was too busy working on my business. Again, getting my life together. The last time I spoke to her was when she when she said that she had something to do on the weekends. And it became a pattern for two weeks thereafter. I pretty much told her, well, when you have time, you uh, when you got time and you get your priorities in order, then we'll talk until then. I have something else to do. And that's when, of course, um, I stopped talking to her, went my own way and encountered the younger girl who had more to offer than than that girl than the white girl that I was talking to. And the kicker part about it is when she called, she said, well, you know, I <laughs> and I'm listening. I turn it up a little bit now on speakerphone. But the the regular the regular uh, the earpiece was loud enough as it was. OK, she said, well, can we um, like, so can we um, can we hang out this weekend? I, I want to talk to you. I haven't talked to you so long and I apologize. Um, I've been I've been so busy. And I have so many things to do. And uh, I've been missing you for quite some time. Do you got some time this weekend? And I, I turned around and looked at my girlfriend who was in the passenger side seat. She was looking at me as if to say, you know, who the hell is this? She can hear the girl's verse, her, her voice. She didn't, want, she didn't want to say nothing because she realized the girl was on the phone, right? She was going to blow up after I got off the phone. After. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so what I said, okay, sure. I will be available uh, Saturday at uh, at uh, you know eight o'clock. You know, um, meet me at Bars and Nobles. No, they, they, yeah, they got some chairs there. Yeah, they yeah, there's a bench there. It's a little bit quiet. People like reading books there. You know, let's 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 head there. I mean, good place, right? <laughs> and so I hung the phone up. Right? She said, "Who is this girl?" Blah, you know, just not really outraged, but you know, who's that girl? You know, they, it's, you got girls calling you like that. You know, you're really, I'm like, I said, slow now, slow now. I said, I got a plan. I got a plan. And this is how it's going to play out. Okay. Now I'm stopping right here. I'm not going to tell you what I told her. I'm going to tell you through action what I did. I said, okay, this is a plan. So fast forward the week to come in the future, Right. They say that we're here now. We're in Barnes and Nobles. We're sitting on the bench inside. They got a Starbucks over there. You can get your coffee if you want to. Okay, I'm very careful with my coffee intake, especially at that time. I'm more, mostly interested in just water, you know, organic juice, that, that sort of thing. Not high fructose sugar and a caffeine. Nothing to be addicted to. So I go back in the bench and uh, she texts and say, okay, she's here. And I'm like, okay, I'm on in, I'm in the inside already, All right? And uh, she sits down and she began to tell me a little, about, a little bit about what she's been going through. You know, the normal jargon. And I'm looking at my wife, I say, okay, I got things to do. I got a place to be. Correct? I'm like, okay, fine. And here's the punchline. She said, well, I've been thinking about our relationship and, uh, you know, I uh, apologize for being so busy. And um and I I can't I can't really find anybody as good as you and I really want to settle down cuz I want to have you know I want to have children in the future and I know that um they're going to need a a good you know they're going to need a good father they're going to need a good uh, a good future you know somebody with a somebody who's stable got their head on straight 
And I've been thinking about it and I think you just might, you might be that guy, but you know, can we start all over again? I know I messed up and you know, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. And, uh, <laughs> I was feeling good that day. Cause again, I was thinking about our previous conversation. So I'm thinking, okay, how can I drill this girl? Cause by that time, again, I'm no fool. I'm thinking, okay, I know what her game is. See, in my mind, and what some of you men should already know, she what she did was she played me off and she decided to, in my face, practically, in other words, talk to other men. She spent time with them and uh, she probably most likely did some donkey dunk with them, went across country, out of town, whatever else, and now that the river has ran dry, she look at me as this nice guy to settle down with and get her left forwards to. And then what would she do? Unleash her package like the common American woman is going to do anyway. You know, OK, here I am. I'm a certain age. And by the way, she was in her 30s. OK, her compared to the 23 year old is like absolutely no deal. No deal. Now, I'll choose 23 year old five times over before I even look your direction. Okay, save your granny panties for somebody else who cares about you and your cobwebs, used cobwebs. Okay, so I'm thinking about this in all my mind and, and again, sharing it with you, being a narrator in this story, is that this is the normal scenario. This is what you will encounter when a girl, one of your exes call you back. Okay, one of your, your exes, somebody from your past, they call you back is because they river ran dry. That's because they made decisions to play around because of the opportunities that's presented to them. And uh, they feel like they could correct their mistakes by you being the uh, blue pill beta. They're waiting for her like some Prince Charming and going to pick up the pieces from where she messed up the first time. When that's how that's not how nature works. That's not how real life works. And that's how uh, a lot of women can become very unaccountable for their actions. When there are lots of blue pill betas who don't comprehend that they are just used as an asset. They are not an individual in the eyes of most women. They are just used as a backup plan. I wasn't going to be her backup plan. So in response to her, after thinking about all this and sharing it with you, of course, I turned to look at it and said, oh, yeah, I said, what what makes you think that, you know, you said that if the relationship will fail, that you would go and, uh, you know, practically get some other man on the on the Internet and all that. So, so why? How come you not? How come you didn't search online to find some other uh, uh, person that you want to settle down with? I mean, there's plenty of guys out there who would, you know, uh, take you for who you are. You're beautiful. You know, you got a round face, you got big eyes, you know, nice straight hair. Like, yeah, I know, but, you know, I just, I just want to be with you. You know, we got a little bit of history and, um, you know, I want to pick up the pieces. I was like, okay, I think it's a, I think it's about time. I said, I'll fill you out and, uh, all right. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, hold on, just sit right here for a minute. Right. And, uh, you know, I went ahead and text my 23 year old friend who was actually sitting in the Starbucks. She was watching, though. listen, she, she was watching the whole time. This was my plan in the car. This, this is how, this is how ruthless I am. I don't play. This is, this is one thing that you're going to learn about Morpheus. I don't play. You come at me like that. I'm going to get you. I'm, I'm not going to get you level. I'm going to let you know where you messed up at. Okay. In a, in a real life movie like scene where you will consider to be unbelievable like this, this that just happened yes it did I ain't gonna reach to your level I'm gonna reach higher and let you know where you jacked up so I'm like I wanna I wanna introduce you to somebody <laughs> so who uh, uh, yeah I have someone who's uh I got someone who's uh, special and they're, they're a very interesting person I said hold on they'll be here in like two minutes right and she's walking over Clicking over there, you know, and she purposely dressed down. She dressed to kill today. You know, she had her nice dress on. It was it's not too tight fitting, but enough to show that she had curves for, you know, from here to uh, 
<laughs> From here to Europe, you know, longer straight hair. You know, she had uh, the uh, the brightest brown eyes, you know, flawless skin, right? You know, and she had these, uh, she had cute nerd, glur- new, cute nerd glasses on, this girl I was with, right? You know, nice black frames. It's like, wow. <laughs> I said, yeah, this is, uh, I said, this is my girlfriend right here. And uh, um, you know what I did? When uh, and I and she already knew who she was, but I pretend like she didn't know who she was. I said, "Yeah, this is uh, this is the girl. This is uh, my friend. You know, she just came from out of town. <laughs> the girl was sitting on the bench that was uh, that I met at Starbucks. I said, yeah, this is the girl I met from out of out of town, and um, you know, we were just talking about books here in this uh, you know in the shop, and well, she's talking about relationships, and um, you know, we're having a really good relationship. Maybe we can teach her." You know, how relationships truly are. I mean, since we've been, you know, committed for quite some time and we we go out, we enjoy each other and have fun. You know, maybe, um, you know, maybe we can invite her out sometime, you know, again, maybe to a different coffee shop or out to a bar or something like that, you know. And the girl was still sitting there flabbergasted. She couldn't she couldn't believe that I was actually doing this in front of her. She couldn't believe this because it see her eyes was glued onto this girl not knowing whether to, uh, you know, to verbally fight her, to physically fight her or what was going on. And uh, I bent over. I said, you know, I, I, she was, I, I looked at my uh, 23 year old girl. I said, you know, what? should I tell her? OK, I was like, should I tell her? Now, how do we meet? Oh, how do we meet? So I'm looking down at her. I'm like, OK, say, like, oh, you know, let me tell you how we met. You know what? We didn't meet online. Um, you know, she was, uh, you know, a friend of one of my clients that so happened to be there in the area. And she was interested in my uh, status, you know, in my profession, what I did. And we start talking and we just hit it off. And, you know, we've been great ever since. And I purposely chose a date right after that day when she uh, she talked about she could find another man online. I chose that day afterwards to say that we met that day after. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, on this such a date, yeah, you know, that's when I met her on this date. She was the best thing that happened to me. And I said, you know what? Maybe one, maybe one day you'll find yourself a good man. Maybe one day you'll find yourself a good man. And, you know, maybe you can have a good relationship like us, you know, for the time being. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to head out of here because we got places to do. I'm getting ready to go take her uptown, you know, and uh, splurge on her because she deserves it. And, um, you know, you can go ahead and sit here and, you know, you, you enjoy your day and nice meeting you. You know, I was like, well, what, what is your name again? Oh, your stones. Oh, OK. You know, pleased to meet you, you know, and turned around and gave my 23 year old girl a really good sloppy kiss on the lips. And walked away. And slowly but surely started glimpsing back at her every now and then she was still sitting there. Like, what the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? My 23-year-old friend was crying by the time she walked out of the shop. She was crying by the time she walked out of Barnes & Nobles. We was rolling. Rolling while we was walking out. She didn't... The girl, when she was sitting there, she didn't reach in her pocket, try to pick up a cell phone and talk to the next guy. She was just sitting there like, what the hell just happened? (laughs) I don't play that game. I don't play it because all of a sudden, after we placate with ourselves, after we, after we're in our space bubble as individual people, right? We don't think about the future consequences. And at the time I was, I was interested in trying to be in a stable relationship and try to make things happen. Right. I was having a somewhat hope strategy and, um, after a failed relationship, after a failed relationship, because of the the inability of peer bonding females, which have more nails than glue, and uh, no more uh, rosy flower petals. Now it's just the uh, now it's just the thorny uh, root of the flower. You know, uh, roses with thorns. Now it's just thorns. No more roses. I had to realize that the hard way. So I played the game right along with them. 
my red pill was lethal. My red pill was at the point of giving them, giving them exactly what they want. Giving them exactly what they want. Because it's never about 10 years in advance. It's never about, well, what's going to happen five years from now? And what made it worse was she called back after, uh, I think it was during the night, during that day. And she was livid. She was livid. She was like, you know, who the hell is this girl? And what blah, 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 you think you were doing? Blah, blah. Like you met her right after we was talking. What was you talking to her the whole time while we were talking? I wanted her to have that reaction because she want to play the game. I can play the game, too, but better. I can play it better. So I told her, I said, no, it, it wasn't like that. But I'll tell you what it was like. You said you can find another man uh, right after. You said you can go online and pick up somebody else if things don't work out. And you want to sit up here and talk to this guy um, on the Internet as if I was expendable. So, you know, the game's on you. The joke is on you. And this is what she said to try to further guilt me. She said this. She said, well, you know, I wanted to have your child and I wanted to settle down and I wanted to have a future, you know, and I was thinking about us. You know, I wanted to just, you know, um, you know, change my ways and do something. I said, well, you know what? It's too late. You had that opportunity and I'm not your stand in guy and nor am I going to be your backup plan because I know how you women operate. Absolutely not. I'm not going to sit here and be the prize and joy only for you to try to take advantage of because you don't change. People don't change overnight because what they do is they 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 the chameleon. They'll change for that moment. They'll try to fill you out and enjoy your energy, your time, your prospects. Okay, whatever that you have to offer. But as soon as something better comes along in their peripheral vision. As soon as something better comes along, they'll jump on that one. They'll jump on that opportunity immediately and do it all over again. Instead of bearing down when they have the opportunity and make something happen. Make a future happen. Okay, and the audacity for her to talk about she want to raise a family and have children. Absolutely not. Not with somebody who don't have long vision. But this is the quality that men have to deal with. This is this is what we have to deal with. And what I would be getting or every now and then I might get uh, older women rolling their eyes. And I'm sitting here with a 23, 24 year old girl rolling their eyes. They mad at her because she looked better than them. She's younger than them. You know, probably even smarter than them. A lot more easygoing than them. You know, she's not burdened with two or three kids like them. OK, and she has the opportunity to change her life if she so choose to to settle down, whereas their days are done. You know, there there have been there. They're used to bees. You know, they have to work daily every day in order to make ends meet because they decided to. I want to just have a job. It's all about me. I'm not going to you know the kids. You know, forget about them. You know, I just got bills to pay. Right. As if I'm a sign up for that. And here I am only interested in peace, happiness and living my life. Not some woman giving all her time and energy to a job or a corporation coming home talking about I'm tired. At any moment with when I'm with my 23, 24 year old girl, but you know what, baby, just don't, you don't have to worry. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. It's all good. You know, just take care of home. Do what you need to do. Right. You know, take care of me. You know, adjust my books. You know, take care of the bills, you know, do the envelopes. You know, I got some laundry over here. I'll help you. I do it myself. I've been doing it for myself for the longest time anyway, but you will get something out of it. You take care of me. I take care of you type of ordeal. Not we take care of ourselves, And now we come together, take care of ourselves. How are you going to how are you going to come together as a how are you going to come together as a giver? You got this group of people, right? Where you say, well, mine is well, mine is mine. Yours is yours. And you get together. You get married to this person. And what's mine is mine. What yours is yours. And you live a separate life where you just both of you just put in on the bill like 50 50 type of deal. Which usually don't work only seldomly every now and then it works. Right. But yet you're in the same home, but you end up still in a separate home and so comfortable where. 
you both know full well you talking to somebody on the side, dealing with people on your job or on your contracts or whoever that they may be. But you're comfortable with it. But yet you come together only with this respectful split home. <laughs> you know, and barely see the kids. You ship the kids off somewhere. They go to indoctrinated camp or tutor or mentor or whatever that you do. And you come home and start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not For me, no I I know this I didn't say feel I know this like If I'm going to be with somebody Okay, if I'm going to be with someone It's going to be something that is stable Something that we are together It's our house, not my house Okay, and we're going to work it out together It's not about 50-50 type of thing It's that, hey, this needs to be done Let's just make it happen Because it's both of our responsibility Although I'm going to be the alpha, I'm going to be the lead. I'm going to make sure that things are happening properly like it need to be. But it's not going to be a separate mindset. And if she had virtue, if she has some quality to offer and the divorce laws changes, you know, and, and uh, the, uh, the idea of the, uh, the female liberation that we have going on changes a little bit, then may, that may be a little bit more of a prospect's. But until then, there's nothing but fun in game. There's nothing serious to take on. There's there's nothing that could be of value to the average man. Nothing, really. There's really nothing to be of value to the other man. So, therefore, when we're in a situation, we have to protect ourselves. We have to look out for ourselves and uh, receive hate speech for it. You know, receive uh, angry women and angry people trying to call us grown boys. Or we haven't that we're irresponsible, you know, that we are, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, that we are cradle robbers. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because we're with older, younger, fertile, you know, more viable, easier to get along with girls instead of over the hill, used up spaghetti balls. Okay. <laughs> so while you're doing that, we have to protect ourselves. Because long vision is nowhere in sight. It's nowhere in sight for a lot of people. And there's a there's the minority of them who do, but the majority of them, absolutely not, Neo. Absolutely not. And I told you this was three years ago, so that, that wasn't too far away. That was not too far away. And there's a lot of women who can still do the same thing. And they, they won't say it, but they'll do it. They'll, they will do it. You know, should you not operate correctly, all she got to do is pick up the phone and call up any type of, uh, you know, Tommy, Greg, Tony, Bill, Jim, you know, Brad. And you're done for and you will never know till later on. Oh, this ain't really your child. This really belongs to Brad. <laughs> That's why I want, that's why I came back after uh, after five years when you didn't hear anything from me. That's what's that was going on in five years. Now here I am. That's another thing. That's that's another thing that is a disturbing, crippling, retarded decision for a man to make. But you, but they do it all the time. Where you know this lady is bearing someone else's child. And she comes to you for a uh, for support. She comes to you to be this white knight. I'm going to save this woman energy because you can't find nobody better. Because you don't want to wait long enough to find a proper woman who isn't bearing somebody else's DNA. Because you don't love yourself enough to reach higher to have a better goal for yourself. OK, because you feel like, well, there's no other better opportunity. And I love this girl because she gives me good head. You know, you, you and what you do is you go ahead and put a ring on it. You'll go ahead and say, well, I'll go ahead and raise this other DNA from this this woman. Right. OK, not knowing and not even caring about the history of what she did, how her previous relationship gone on. And uh, the fact that she's not with the baby's daddy and she'll give you excuses. Well, he was this and that. Oh, he was abusive. Oh, I had to get away from him because, you know, there was domestic violence or he's, you know, he was uh, stalking me or something like that. 
you know, that's all you accept because you're getting the opportunity to donkey dunk with her. Now it's your time. It's your time now. You don't want to lose your opportunity. You don't want to lose your time. So you'll accept it. When I invest in a woman, and here's here's the key here. When I invest, I invest in something that there's possibly going to be something coming from it. There's there's a high chance and a high op, there's a high opportunity that there is going to be some success from it. And therefore, that's where my pennies will be at. And that's where my bid will be at right there, because there's a possibility that there is going to be a high rate of a success than a lower rate of success, even though it's not uh, it's not advised to try to seek out long term relationship anyway, because most of them are rotten. OK, because of our standards today, we don't have standards. We got low standards. Not sit up here and put my time, my bid, my energy in someone who I already know who have been out there on the roller coaster. OK, probably have their life since 16, 17 and standing there with two or three kids. Why would you do such a thing instead of waiting for someone else who is a more cleaner plate, a cleaner slate with a better possibility? And what you don't understand on the often is a lot of these younger girls around that age, you know, 23, 23, 24 and all that. Right. You know, there's a lot of other men that are trying to get at them as well, especially around their age range because of certain um, because of certain prosperities and successes that she can offer if she get her head on straight. But during that time, there's a lot of older women and mothers. I've spoken to you about this before in the audio are actually preventing these, these girls from making the proper decision. Because one thing is a lot of them don't have father figures at home. So what they do is they ruin their fertile years, those years where they can meet somebody with good prospects, good idea, good head on their shoulders between the age of 22, 24, settle down and make something happen. Right. They get with the wrong type of guy. They get with the aggressive guy. You know, they get with the classic aggressive um, as what some people say, thug, because it's a common it's a common word. So I got to use that in this academy. OK. And they will get with guys who don't really know themselves, guys who are in and out of uh, trouble with the law, guys who can't pay their own bills, guys who live with their mommy's house in their mommy's basement. You know, guys who don't have nothing to themselves. And it's not all about money. It's not all about it's not all about them having a, a house to go to. It's just about having something for himself. It's about having some type of stability for himself. It's about having two dollars to rub together. It's about being uh, responsible for himself where he doesn't have to ask him for any help. And even if he's not going to be there to provide uh, financial uh, stability or some type of home or whatever for her, as long as he's able to maintain himself, as long as he's able to uh, uh, hold his life together and not need anybody, you know, he owns his car. He's fixing his car. He's, he has his eyes on the future. You know, that's an idea to go. But she is enabled of all that because of all the opinions from other old washed up people. OK, she's she's uh, attacked by other so-called liberal women who is like, well, you know, don't worry about men right now. Just go out there and just focus on yourself. You know, you you get married, you settle down when you get ready to. As if we are gods against nature. As if we are gods against nature, as if we can tell nature when we get ready for it. Right. And so she makes the wrong decision. So that means her years of 23 and 24. All the way pushing, pushing 30. Right. She's only focused on career. She's doing exactly what society want her to do. But she a donkey dunk. Don't don't you don't be mistaken. Don't you think because she's just in a career that she's not going to be donkey dunking and uh, flashing online and not trying to put herself up for the highest bidder because they it happens all the time and they get their sugar daddies. They will get their sugar daddy. They will look completely over the 32 year old guy and she will be with somebody else a little bit older than that. To get her through college, to get her through her rough patch to get her through her situation or to get her that flashy car because daddy can't do it because there's no daddy around. Mommy can't do it because mommy's struggling with a broken home. 
So she'll find a way to get her Malibu, her Chevy Cruze, or her Impala. She'll find a way to get that car that she wants. By some blue pill, old, rusty, crusty, busty, who will say, well, I'm never going to have another opportunity to be with nobody like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and appease to her. Whatever she wants, I'll give it to her. I'll be the sugar daddy. The long-term effects of it is unseen because these are only the end results of it. Or what, I'm sp- what I'm speaking of is the node end of the frequency. But when you keep going backwards and you wind back up on this pyramid, You'll begin to see that the reason why all this occurs, why this confusion happened, and there's going to be a future regardless what you, there's going to be a future. Tomorrow's what's most important. So at the particular point of man and woman, just like you will say the beginning is Adam and Eve, which is a joke and a half. Okay, laughable, right? I talked about this in audio. Where the production of the next human being is from that. Okay. Whether you donating sperm or whether you are doing some type of uh, dropping eggs in yourself, whatever else it may be, it is still the beginning, which is just the man and woman to keep it simple and straightforward. So when they cease to uh, reproduce properly and there's no father figure, there's no father geese anywhere and it's just this emotional circle and it's half hearted and it's broken. Then what type of eggs are you dropping? What type of future are you anticipating on? And I gave you examples of my own small struggle. You know, my own struggle, because this this girl, right, you know, she had the proper uh, mother or father in her life. Our person told, you know, when you find a good man, you know, when you find a decent man, you know, you need to be careful. Don't don't abuse him. You know, don't don't go out there and think that all these men are expendable just because you can, honey. You shouldn't do it. You know, but there's people around her and others. They're saying, go ahead. You know, if a guy like you and you're already with the guy, you know, go ahead and and vet out three or four of them at one time. Go, You can do it. Go ahead. No, you can you can go ahead and and go out of town on, on on a yacht. You know, with this with this guy and and, uh, you know, be passed around like a uh, a cigar in the dorm. <laughs> and you, yeah, there, there's going to be some there's going to be some guys who's going to be waiting for you when you get off that boat and you come back. You know, there's going to be some guys who's going to accept you just the way that you are. And the guys who do, those are the humglum, uh, you know, American you know, weak, desperate, you know, I can't find a better woman type of guy who would invest his time and his energy. And uh, most times those guys aren't going to be the high grade red pill, you know, alpha type of dudes who, you know, own stuff, you know, CEOs. These are going to be guys who, you know, uh, you know, I ain't going to, I'm not going to talk about occupations right now because, you know, if you got a job, you know, that's nice. Right. I'm not going to bring that into the canopy, but I would say guys who aren't uh, owning things like that, guys who have a different type of occupation are a blue collar. Okay, she ends up eventually settling for that guy, right? And that guy who can't find anything better accepts her and settles for her. But what ends up happening is they have problems peer bonding. They argue every day, they struggle every day, and they end up having a child, or she will come onto the scene with a child from somebody else's, uh, from her mistakes, from her bad actions. Okay, and so the answer to that question is simple. That's where the arguments start. That's why they can't get along. That's why the marriage doesn't stick for a long time. That's why it's plain obsolescence. Because her inability to peer bond with him, her inability to be able to give him any point of her virtuous, fertile life or energy because it's already been sold, brought, and given away when she was 22, 23, 24, and 25, you know, to pushing 30. And therefore, the offlings is nowhere to be found. There's no future, and it's, and guess what? Going down the hill of the pyramid continues the same. Then it's one shafting away from honor and loyalty to the same. Next thing you know, you got a society who's walking around with the most tightest revealing 
I'm not committed. I can get any type of guy online as I want to, right? I don't have to be diligent to you because there's going to be another blue pub beta to come right after you the day after. And therefore, we are not as advanced as we think we are against animals. Animals are smarter than we are. They still know how to look out for their kind and their people. You know, even today, so many years later, you'll still look at geese. And there's never an alone geese, never an alone geese. That's the deep part about it is even if, if they don't have offling, there's no uh, little baby geese walking behind them. And it's just one geese standing there. You're going to see another geese not afar off standing right next to the geese. Or another wonderful thing is instead of using the dumb phone and Internet like what uh, mammals need. <laughs> OK, they'll be perched on the roof somewhere and you'll see another geese far away on another geese. And the geese is communicating with that other geese and you can hear them communicating with each other. You can hear them and then eventually they start flying with each other. But we, on the other hand, we don't we quite don't get it. You know, we're we're not looking at it like, OK, you know what? Twelve years from now, this little bitty two year old is going to need a brighter future. This two year old is going to need to peer bond and probably procreate themselves. But what I'm going to do, here's our thinking today. You know, the average person, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a WAP culture. I'm going to create a culture of no virtue. You know, I'm going to create a culture where everything is so easily at the tip of our fingers. I'm going to create a culture where they don't have to be virtuous and committed and honorable to their kind. That means just, you know, to people. I'm not talking culturally. You know, I'm going to teach them to just be all by themselves, to, you know, struggle in life alone. Even though there's trillions of people that are here and you're not alone, I want you to think that you are alone. You know, I want you to be I want you to be weaker apart and not stronger together and and think that you're independent and you're doing quite well. Right. Instead of thinking about what we are creating for the next coming after the next coming after the next. We only think about what's going on for ourselves. And therefore, a lot of these people walk around like automatons with with uh, what do you call that? Bobbleheads just walk around like a bobblehead with a cigarette or, or some type of pipe in our mouth. This bobblehead is going along with the program senselessly. Marshmallow brains. So I thought I'd share that with you, Neil, and put myself in this lesson as well. And yes, that was a situation that really happened. It really happened. And to put the cherry on top of the cake before I let you go. Um, the girl called herself being hurt. The girl that was, uh, the girl that decided to, um, find other men interesting on the internet. She ended up acting as if she really cared about being with me. And she felt like she was really troubled that I was with my 23 year old girl, but she had that opportunity and she was the one who ruined it. But this is when men get soft and they want to say, oh, okay, baby, I'll accept you. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Yeah, okay, we'll give it a try again. Let's try again. And then what ends up happening is when you get with this girl, there's a reason why she came back. Because sometimes, well, actually most times she came back and she already has, she already has a baby in her womb already. And you won't know that till nine months later. You'll think it's yours. And at that time, she this is when she'll try to do her, uh, She'll try to hook me. I know how women operate. This is when they when they coming back, they're coming back to do some damage. That's when they coming back. They should have worked it out the first time, but logically put emotions aside. And uh, it's not truly their fault because of their parents. I told you that because they're not taught to do right. So they're not going to do right. So what they do is they go out there and make a mistake. Oops, I think I'm pregnant or duh, I don't know I'm pregnant, even though I've been skipping, you know, a few periods have passed and I'm not doing anything yet. OK, and they try to they try to get a retirement plan, you know, they try to uh, unload their baggage onto the blue pill beta who's been waiting there the whole time, which usually is the ex-boyfriend or the ex-idiot. With, who have nothing else better to do for himself.
but to be a pack mule. And so she would try to lay with you, be with you, and uh, try to um, convince you that she's on the pill, that she has some type of birth uh, birth prevention uh, utility within her. And she'll say, well, I love you so much, baby. I trust you. I haven't been around with anybody. You don't have to protect yourself. Don't wear your helmet. You don't need a condom. And you being gullible, blue pill, retard, can't find another better woman and thinking that's going to latch on to her, thinking that, you know, now she changed her whistle. You know, she left and she came back and she's a new woman now. You know, she ain't never going to be with she, she's she's now she's with me now she wants to get married and you know here we are we're getting ready to consummate and then you will entwine yourself with her that night and you're not so sure if you have impregnated her or not or shall I say y'all made the y'all made this new little bitty human for the future you don't know you're worried and then give her a few months or shall I say a month later or a few weeks later then she'll finally say something in her planning and in her mind to tell you that she's possibly pregnant when all that time she knew that she was already possibly pregnant and there you go wasting nine months to a year just trying to figure out if this child is yours and now here she is with this bump in her stomach because you're smart she got this bump in her stomach now for months later right and you're sticking with it because you're not sure and I don't know about how far the technology goes yet where you can get a blood test and the baby's actually in the womb I don't know about all that okay but I do know that there's a lot of men who don't research I do know that we think with our little bitty head, not with our big head. I do know that y'all tolerate. Here's the three women I always talk about. Lucy, Karen, and the bewitched woman. If you don't know who those are, look at one of my recent uh, audios. I can't tell you which one it was. It was one, the re one of the recent ones before now. And I talk about these three type of personalities. You got the, you got the I love Lucy crybaby woman. Who makes mistaken? Ah, I can't believe I did that. Then you got the Karen who wants to walk around like Miss Robocop and be politically correct on everything and control things out of her control. And then you got the bee witch who thinks that her lifestyle is based on her being the magical dime in the, the absolute unique unicorn when most men can do what she can do. There's nothing special about being a woman. You can just do what you do by nature. So y'all tolerate it. So you will wait for the nine months to try to figure out if this child is yours. So you will end up waiting and pantering to get your blood test if you want to do that to see if this baby belongs to you. And then, of course, the emotions come when the baby is you're at the hospital and the baby's being received and you there not knowing if you're the, the child's father or not. And then you're so emotionally wrapped up in it because you don't understand how the soul and the mind entwangles, entwines itself where consummation is a serious thing. That's why you hear most people say, don't do it unless you're interested in marriage. Or even churches have told you, do not touch her until you're married. Don't touch her until you're married because the entwining is a very toxic thing. And a lot of us aren't mature enough to handle it. We are children with a loaded gun most times. And we cock it right to our own forehead because we are insignificant in our research and our self discovery. So therefore we go along with the program because the emotions are toxic. The energy is toxic. You invest yourself with this girl. You have invested yourself. So there's two type of men during that time. There was one man who is completely blue pill. And he say, you know what? Well, I still love this girl. I don't care whether it's my child or not. I'm still going to love her anyway. This happens more often than you think. I don't care. Well, I've been the father this whole time. So I might as well go ahead and be the father regardless. Whoever the baby is, well, let's leave it to the question. We'll figure it out in the future. You know, maybe if we figure it out, I've already had a stinking suspicion, but hey, you know, you know, 
At least I had the opportunity. At least I was here the whole time. Then Rare is the guy who's going to say, well, I'm going to get the blood test before I sign this birth certificate, so forth, so on. Let's figure this out first. I want to know if it's mine. And be done with it so you can understand and know the game that was played on you, why she came back to you. Because this happened more commonly than anyone is comfortable to talk about. You will be out of your mind to think that this is something that's not happening. There's a reason why she will leave and come back. You should not accept a relationship where it's a, oh, let's take some time away from each other. Yeah, she'll take time away from you, but just like anger management, remember what the guy said? That doesn't mean she's taking time away from the sausage. She's taking time away from yours, your Oscar Mayer, or Vanilla sausage. <laughs> from you. That doesn't mean she's going to go out there and make logical decisions. That doesn't mean she's going to go out there and build a business and do something that's going to be healthy for the society or the future. If that were the case, you will be experiencing it today. Why is everything so emotional now and illogical? Based on how you feel. Now, I have made the path for you and gave you just a little bit of detail on how it begins with man and woman to produce a future. And I could have brought it, broke it down a little bit more articulate. I could have did a little bit better, but it's a lot of information. I have to keep it simple where a lot of us can probably understand because there's going to be a future tomorrow and it's going to start with our children. It's going to start with the young men and young women who are now dealing with the mud that we have created for them because we didn't create a grassland. We created mud. Okay. And um, now on this pyramid, which is on the right side, right? Make another pyramid that interlopes, interloops with that pyramid. So this, this pyramid is going to point to the left. Now, in the Pac-Man opening part is to the right. Now it looks like a diamond in the middle, right? Okay. My prediction and it's already happening and it's been happening before with plastic in your food, with genetically modified food, high fructose corn syrup, medications, pills, uh, cameras, dumb phones, dumb TVs, automatic uh, robots to clean your house, cars to drive for you, um, push button door handles, uh, automatic apps to turn on your air conditioning. The future is going to be robots, not humanity. It's not going to be for you. You know, your your future for your child is going to be your boy, your your son is going to have a robot for a wife or a blow up doll or the pornography industry is going to skyrocket with a whole lot of women who's going to do the very basic, the very basic occupation that's been done for years now and which is go on there and say who's the highest bidder well what's going on 34 here 100 over here 150 150 200 35 right right because every day there's a piece of plastic created that we are advancing in but we are de-evolving in our humanity. So as the pyramid is going down with our integrity, our virtue, our sense of self, our identity, what's escalating is computers, robots, and technology. 
So if you wipe away your humanity going downhill, men and women don't know how to get along. They think men are expendable. We are nothing but a pocketbook to them, not an individual to bring in a new future for the generation. Okay, you know that. Stop lying to yourself. You lying if you think it's otherwise. But yet you got a dumb phone every year. Every year the phone's advancing. Every year the car's advancing. Every year you got something else that you don't have to put your fingers on. Every year a building is erected to tear up the ground. Every year another plastic, insignificant, inferior car is created to make you feel like you are superior in a lapse of luxury because you got a couple of extra dollars to rub together. Every year something is put together that's a little bit more better in, in certain products and certain things than what it used to be. But where is the human advancement? Where are we learning how to come together as a team? Whereas we comprehending the way that we dress, the way that we carry is going to be a assault on the next generation. Where? Barely anywhere. Barely anywhere. Because there's no there's no type of idea to be a role model for the next generation. Because everybody's struggling with dealing with their own bills, dealing with their own castle. And what do my Indian friends say? We are me, me type of world. And while while you're doing that, there's going to be other cultures who's going to excel beyond you. There's going to be others who's going to come in and they're going to know how to take care of family. They're going to be loyal to each other. And here is the bottom line here. And then I'm going to get off this audio. The way that a lot of other cultures and other people have succeeded wasn't because they owned corporations. It wasn't. And and here's what a lot of other cultures think and which I don't get into, especially when I hear a lot of black people say this. And some and there's a lot of black spokesmen people that try to say that when Chinese come over here, they're able to get um, loans easier. They come over here, they get money from their people. They come over here. But, you know, I hear all these excuses, all these sort of excuses. No, I'm going to tell you what it is. That's that's what you think it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. OK, when other cultures come over here, they do something that we don't know how to do because we're so retard. They stick to gather. Do you know what that means to stick? together they don't need to have a thousand dollars in their savings account they don't need to do like you and get a loan they don't need to sit there and do like most of us and wait for mommy and daddy to pay our way through college and to do this and that they don't need to do that they depend on each other they look out for each other they support each other. They know how to live in a house, maybe like sardines. But once they done being in that house, being sardines, they will own the entire block over time. They know how to speak to their own. They know how to look out for the future of their own offspring and their little ones where they have value and they make sure that that daughter or that son chooses the right suitor and not just jump from internet to internet to social media to social media just because they can. And if any of their child do that, when children do that of other cultures, they are usually banished. They are dishonorable to the parents and the parents will immediately disown them. And when you see this happening, it's obvious when the way that the child's, the, the children are, when you look at the way that they're dressed, they got tattoos on. Some of them are emo. They pierce their ears. They pierce their nipples. They pierce just about everything on their body. They got snakes running up their, their spinal cord all the way down to their, um, to their gluteus maximus. All right. Bull nose ring. They dye their hair. They color their hair all types of colors. Right. Because they're stepped into something that their parents do not agree with. That's what happens. So they become banished by their parents, even though the parents are going to be nice. They're going to say, oh, honey, I still love you. I care about you. Or, yeah, we're going to have dinner. 
We'll have Thanksgiving. You know, we'll do a Christmas run. You can stop by. You can do this and that. But the loyalty of the family is broken. Because usually they try to look out for each other. This is what my Indian brother was saying. And he's absolutely true. Because they know how to stick out for each other. And they will sit down and make sure that she's making the right decision. Not sitting there thinking that he is expendable. And if anything, they do try to make sure that the children are raised up where they can peer bond with their mates. They make sure that they're not sitting there trying to promote themselves. Okay, to be a mess of debauchery. So therefore, should a suitor come along and say, yes, I'm willing to settle down. He will have something to settle down with. So therefore, when they're outside of the country, it can be a third world country, whatever struggles that they have, which causes uh, struggle sometimes do help people to come together. When you're struggling together, sometimes you understand each other's struggle and it, it mends the pieces together. And the frustration is a lot easier when y'all just support each other. You know, when y'all just look out for each other because all you have is you and the clothes on your back. But sometimes that's a benefit to have very little because you have more of integrity and more of what life really means. Then having less of that and having everything that's going to give you a plush, ignorant, separate mind lifestyle where you can do it all by yourself and you don't need the power of family in unity. People succeed because they have the power of family in unity. They have the power to proceed things ahead of time where in the situation I was with with that beautiful girl. OK, well, she was beautiful at the time. I know right now she's she's out of whack. Okay, she fully regretted. Right? But she would have thought twice about thinking that there's a smorgasbord of men who's always going to be at the ready and she don't have to be accountable for her actions. Why would you why would I want to be a man to be a part of her card deck? Why do you men do that? Why do you get into situations and you hear red pill men not just myself, you, some of you are a part of MGTOW and you hear men talk about that and you still go out there and you do your cold approach. You speak to these girls thinking that you are the only one, even if, if she looks good and she's cute. Okay. And she's fertile and she didn't hit the wall yet. You know, full well, even more so there's going to be somebody that's talking to her online are at home or around her job and you're not it. So why would you put yourself in a situation at a disadvantage when you know this, you still sign up anyway and think you are the special Mandinga? No, you are a dingbat and you are dingy in your thinking. Because culturally here in the westernized civilization, we have no honor whatsoever. There used to be a time where women will feel they will feel like they have sinned against God if they lie to you and they're speaking to two or three different other guys at the same time. They will feel like they have really given them their body and themselves away and wasted themselves if they did something like that. Now, you know how to get away with it. They'll say, this is my friend. These are my friends. These are my friends from college. I'm going out to eat with my friend from college. I met them on Facebook. And I haven't spoken to them in 14 years. And you're like, okay, okay, all right, all right. You know, Ralph the dog. All right, all right, okay. Fine, Cheryl. You can do it. Ooh. Loyalty is lost. That's another audio reference that I'm giving to you. You need to check out that audio. That one, I'm on fire as well. Loyalty is lost. So what ended up happening is this, getting back to the subject. 
because sometimes I, I can veer off like that because I, I want to say other things. I can't do it because it's YouTube. So I know sometimes I teeter totter right on the edge. <laughs> I teeter totter on the edge and I don't mean to. I get because if you if you met me, I'm, I'm real. I'm uncut. You know, and, and it's hard to do that when I'm speaking because I'm I don't like to. I don't like to pretend like I'm something that I'm not. So if you were to talk to me face to face, I'll let you have it. And you'll see that I mean business. Okay. And I can't talk like that right here. Okay. And you'll see why I'm called more for you. You see why I get things done. And you'd be like, yeah, that that's alpha. You know, I can see, I can see the alpha in your eyeballs. I can't help it. But in this, I have to try to be as decent as possible to teach you to be the professor here and bridge an understanding. I can't do that, you know, if I'm being very aggressive with you or in the subjects. Okay. So it's hard to ver but get back on the subject. So the future is going to be transhumanism and it's already been done. I told you about this several times before. It's true. The even the small things is still a point of transhumanism. When you are walking on a treadmill, okay, and a lot of you that yeah, that's not true. It's it's still a form of trans. It's transhumanism, trans, transitioning, transition to change. Sound like a pastor, huh? To change, transition. That's what it is. To change, to transition. This transition when you can otherwise walk. Right. Use your own legs. Whenever you depend on a machine that's transitioning your energy to the energy of a device or a machine or a computer. So it is called the transition transhumanism. It's going to be even more so now because dolls are going to be created for men because women don't want to be a part of a man's world anymore. They want to be a part of a woman's world. That's why they don't want to peer bond with you. That's why a lot of them do know after a certain amount of time in her life. Okay. That there is not going to be any settling down and there will be no Jack in the Beanstalk waiting for her. I'm only one red pill man amongst a thousand of them. Two more years from now, it's going to be three thousand to 4,000. There's going to be many other men who is talking like me and they are not going to take no for an answer. It's going to be zero dollars and they're going to know exactly what they want. And it's going to be game over for the females who want to walk around and think that they everything is okay. This isn't cotton candy land. This is not the, the pink unicorn and, you know, the white picket fence lifestyle anymore because of the decisions that we made because we didn't have long vision. Instead of settling down, doing what we're supposed to do to procreate, right? To look at the future of our generation because we're not going to be here forever and think about how it's going to play out in generations from now. All we think is what's going to happen today. Let me have my fun now. Let me drink. Let me drink it all up now. Smoke now. Let me go ahead and pop these pills now and have my frat parties. Let me go ahead and do this. Get myself pregnant. Do all kind of irresponsible acts. Right. Not not caring about how we are damaging our genetics, not care about what we're doing to our own mindset that we're going to be passing on to the next generation. And then here we are with the next generation going downhill. And guess what? And here's and here's your problem now, because the uh, the mindset of the average person isn't as great as it used to be. I'm saying that very lightly and very kindly. Now that we are not what we used to be. Now we are at a decline of de-evolution, right? Guess what they got to do? Have y'all ever heard of these? Do y'all read these books called Books for Dummies? I know some of y'all do. And you go to the library, you know, uh, computerizing for dummies, you know, tying your shoe for dummies, you know, dating for dummies, you know, and it sound, it sound funny and I didn't do my research on it as I should have to go deeper into why, but... I think it makes sense to call it that, you know, and you may think it's an insult, but actually 
there are things that are made even without the dummy word where you are still considered as a dummy. It's in action. There's a lot of things that are called dummy proofing. They have to dummy proof things because people don't know how to do it for themselves. Like wash your hands. You know, you get a big sign on the front of the door that says, wash your hands. Do you know how to wash your hands? Why do they have to? It's called dummy proofing. You know, you got warning signs everywhere. You got, uh, you know, like big cones. You got, uh, you know, like curves. You got this big yellow. You got this big yellow and uh, black sign in front of you say, you know, don't hit this meeting over here. But they got to put it there because there's some dummies who hit it anyway. You know, they got to dummy proof things because we are at it because we're at a disadvantage with our own evolution. We are de-evolving because we've been lazy all these generations instead of thinking of our own future. You know, continue to procreate the next generation without making preventative measures. You know, and it still chuckles me when I'm going down a street or a highway and I see this median, right? And the median is small. It's the median is thinner than your car or your Honda Civic, whatever you're driving. It's thinner than that narrow, right? And some dummy will still hit the median right in the middle where you see this big yellow barrels sitting right there with black arrows letting you know that there is a median right here and they'll still hit it. <laughs> I mean, in some places you got a five lane highway, five lanes. Some places is a seven lane highway, seven lanes, and you still have people that want to run to the next person that's next to them and can't put on their turn signal. You got maps to get places that's on your dumb phone. But they used to have a thing where there was a map that you can put in your hands. You can actually read it in your fingers and know where something is. And they would update the map every now and then. Then you have the yellow pages. The list goes on. And in this map, you will know what street that you own. Trevor, whatever, Tavern Road, 45th and 6th Street, you know, North Carolyn Road or something like that. You know, the underbridge is, you know, it's, it's, it's 12 inches high. Be careful. You know, that sort of thing. And they outline some, and you, you edge it to your memory and say, okay, I remember. I remember. And you just remember it by going down that road. Right? But now what we'll do is we'll go to the dumb phone and we'll tap in where we need to go. And the phone have to tell us with the, with the, uh, with the lady's computerized voice. Turn left here. 100 feet. Turn left on on Sadro Road. <laughs> and then the bad thing, you are at your destination. As if you can't look up and see the signs for yourself. <laughs> and you know what, what's bad about it is? And here's what's bad. It's not just you, that person in the back of the classroom here, right? Oftentimes, whoever's sending you out there, they themselves don't have the right direction themselves. They, they are not even giving the right instruction. So it's like that for some truck drivers. You know, they have a dispatcher, right? Who's, you got a dispatcher who will send you to somewhere, to some area, right? You got the zip code, you got, you got all kinds of things, right? And the dispatcher gets the gets the address wrong they'll give you a different address that's probably across the street or probably a block away and you'd be like you you should be thinking dang do anybody got their head on straight is anybody doing their homework first and then you get out there you frustrated like you gave me this address and then the person say you know well that's the that, uh, um that's that's the closest address to your destination that's the closest address to your destination <laughs> like didn't you talk to the customer didn't the customer tell you what the address was huh I mean, did, didn't they tell you what cross what cross street the address on the building and what color it was how big it was or the house do you, can you not see it 
You need you need uh you need Sirius to tell you or Alexis who's a computer? <laughs> now what are we what are we dealing with here? What what are we dealing with? What are we dealing with here in the in the human evolution of the society? I mean, are we are we smarter than what we used to be because we got more technology to think for us? Or are we more stupid? Now you just push the button and say, well, I'm just going to let them deal with it. They're figured out on the GPS. You know, just let Google deal with it. Google Maps. Just upload Google Maps. And they'll be the first one to send you to a different location in a ditch somewhere or a swamp. Yeah, here's the house right here. <laughs> This this huge colder sacks, you know, no cars in sight. The building ain't even built yet. It's a construction site, and you sitting there. I, I don't see the house. <laughs> they ordered some uh, some Grubhub over here. Like, <laughs> is it construction worker? Who is it? Like, dang, people, get it together. Get it together. Get it together. So there is something that's good that's happening, <clears throat> and I'm be sarcastic with this. There's a uh, loud airplane flying overhead, <laughs> ain't saving nobody's life, but it's loud as hell. <laughs> so, well, we're doing good because now, uh, you know, sexual transmitted diseases are rampant all over the place you don't know who got it and who doesn't you know now uh, you know children are very much raised in a broken home so we did a good job there you know at least you know and uh, you know other cultures they're doing quite well being able to stay together as long as they're not Americanized once they get Americanized then you know they get poisoned too they get deceived and they lose what's most valuable to them which is family so, you know, we did a good, we're doing a good job there. And, uh, you know, the animals, they're still, them, they're still themselves and they're succeeding. You know, even though we want to put them in the zoo, it should be the other way around. We can be in a zoo and let the animals roll free. It might be easier on the planet and a whole lot more uh, uh, sensible. Because uh, what do we do to our own kind when we don't want to give them proper knowledge and raise them up properly? You know, we, we love bringing children into the world. But uh, we know nothing about raising them, rearing them and giving them a proper identity of existence because we want to program their identity with indoctrination. So we're doing very good there in the West. You know, we're doing just fine. You know, so, you know, if we keep going down the path that we're going, we'll, we'll be transhumanists. You know, we're, we're going we're going down the path. You know, we're doing pretty good. You know, we're we're doing fine carrying our, our computer chips around with us in our dumb phones. You know, we're doing just fine. Because, you know, you know, you got your cars, your navigation, you know, it thinks for you. You know, it has to have a, a 360 camera because you can't use your eyeballs. You know, it's quite well. You know, that's that's advancing for a very advanced human race. You know, and now children have nothing but a plastic future to look forward to, you know, because we love them so much. You know, we do great for our children. You know, so, you know, good job. You know, pat on the back for the rest of our civilization. But as far as other cultures and for those who are who really got their head in the right place, you know, I, I guess those are going to be the ones who's going to be running the future and going to have a prosperous, uh, you know, bunch of CEOs and owners and bosses, you know, that your children are going to have to look up to, you know, while they're walking down the aisle with a robotic wife who can cook clean and, and service him you know then there's some boys some guys who would actually able to uh or um you know get service girls you know girls who would actually come by and clean their house up and you know pick up the kids or take them places you know escort them and vacuum the floor and things like that but you know hey you know that'd be their next job since you know we don't want to get along with each other you know, so that's the future you want, you know, you know, keep it up. You know, we're doing a good job. We're doing a real good job. And it only gets worse because year to year, month to month, moment at the moment, there's always going to be something else created. But there's never going to be any human evolution created. There's never going to be I'm going to sit down. Let's think about how we're going to turn this nation around. How do we make humans more superior? Oh, I know. Let's give them more pills and medication. That's what we do. 
Yes. Yes. That's what we'll do. You know, let's give them something that's going to make their life a lot more lazier. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a good idea. It's going to make them more active. More active. I'm going to get off this rant. I enjoyed myself throwing a few extra things in there. And we're going to start with the next audio that I have prepared for you already. So you know who this is, Lee An C, a.k.a. Morpheus, your professor in the Academy of Wild Men. You know what to do. Like it, share it, and subscribe it so you can get more craziness and more open-minded subjects.